Hello and welcome to News Center. I'm Parikshit Lutra. The big global story we are tracking this evening. Iran has accused Israel of the airstrikes on its consulate in Syria's Damascus that killed at least 11, including senior Iranian military commanders. Syria has condemned the attack as well, but did not explicitly name Israel. Iran's foreign minister has said that the country reserves the right to carry out a reaction and will decide on the response and punishment of the aggressor. Tehran-backed militant group Hezbollah has also reacted, saying that the attack will be met with punishment and revenge. The United States has told Iran it had no involvement or advanced knowledge of Israeli strike in Syria. Israel's military has said that it does not comment on foreign media reports. Meanwhile, non-profit organization The World Central Kitchen has said that at least seven of its workers, mostly foreign nationals, were killed in an Israeli airstrike in central Gaza. The NGO also added that the workers were part of a team delivering food to civilians in Gaza and were travelling in a de-conflicted zone in two armoured cars. Israel said that it expressed sincere sorrow but stopped short of accepting responsibility. To take this forward, we are now joined by Ambassador D.V. Srivastava, former Indian envoy to Iran and distinguished fellow at the Vivekanand International Foundation. Also joining us on the programme, Berzin Wagmar. He is part of the Centre for Iranian Studies at University of London's School of Oriental and African Studies. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on the programme. Uh, Ambassador Srivastava, does this attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus put pressure on the Iranians to hit back hard? considering two senior military commanders have been killed. So is the pressure on Iran to prove that uh, it has the wherewithal to respond? It is a strong power in the Middle East? I think Iran has exercised a lot of restraint so far. If you look at the development since October 7th, and its mm. strength in the region is not in doubt. So I, uh, I, I think they don't have to prove that. And uh, Iranian spokesman has, but Iranian spokesman has said that they reserve the right to retaliate at a time and place of their choice and in the manner they deem fit. So we do hope that uh, all sides will exercise uh, restraint because. Uh, the conflict in Gaza, if it spreads to a wider region, uh, is not good for any side. Absolutely. Let me also go across to Berzin. Uh, Berzin, what do you feel about uh, the implications of a larger conflict? This is the most high-profile target since the US President uh, Donald Trump had ordered the assassination of IRGC General Qasem Soleimani. Uh, could this have retaliation on U.S. troops deployed in different places in the Middle East? It is already happening as we speak since 17th October, Parikshat, when 170-plus U.S. bases and assets have been repeatedly, relentlessly attacked by Iran in Syria, Iraq and Jordan. So this ought not come to surprise because Israel is back and it's picking up the slack by that, I mean, firstly, that it is back to show it's in the game and to re-establish its deterrence, which it momentarily lost on 7th October. And it wants to show to Tehran, quite rightly, that it will not leave to Tehran to, to decide the time and venue of a war to take place, which is why deterrence is essential and it will also need a full victory in Gaza to cement that. Because failing that, it will lead to a multi-front war with, uh, when, with Iranian proxies coalescing in Lebanon, Iraq uh, as such, and Syria, of course, which are obviously determined to existentially decimate Israel. They are quite uh, committed to that. We don't know that only too well. But also, Israel needs to show that after what happened on 7th October, the rape and massacre of Israeli citizens cannot be led to some so-called two-state solution because it only vindicates, glorifies and extols violence as a pathway to achieving strategic goals. So Israel is mm. in the game for this. And please note in the last 24 hours, not a pipsqueak across the Arab world, particularly the GCC mm. countries, all of whom are quite silent and rightly so because they only privately welcome what Jerusalem has carried out since all of them are on the same page. 
maybe barring aside Qatar, which is ambivalent at the best of times in recent years, but all of them believe that Israel is part of the solution in the region and it's not a problem. The only objections we have heard are from obviously Damascus and from Shia proxies and sponsors run by uh, the IRGC across the Middle East. Right. Uh, Ambassador Shavasta, coming back to you, uh, the Israeli forces have not denied carrying out this attack, but they say this is not a consulate. It was a headquarter or it was a unit of the Quds force. Why do you think uh, Iran would have carried out this kind of attack on Damascus? Because carrying out an attack on an embassy or a consulate of a country is almost carrying out an attack on the country itself diplomatically. You are right. I think you wanted to ask why did Israel carry out this kind of attack, not Iran. Um, right. Let's, Israel, first, yeah. uh, let's first be clear about the facts. I think this cannot be denied that this was part of the embassy or consulate. This you have to go by the words of the host government, which is Syria. So this was a violation of number one, Syrian sovereignty. And it was a violation of the Vena Convention which cannot be wished away by simply stating that this was a military facility which is too far-fetched. Um, now, the second, the, your question is, why would Israel do it? And this is what I'm also wondering, because this raises uh, attack on a government uh, facility, raises the risk of uh, escalation. And I don't think... Uh, that is something which is in either Israel's interest or interest of countries of the region. Oil prices have remained more or less under control. They have risen, but they have, you know, it's, it's still a controlled increase. In case the war spreads to the Gulf, all bets are off. So I think this timing of this attack, if it is actually carried out by Israel is uh, very concerning, though I must hasten to add that so far Israel has denied it. Iran has accused Israel of having carried out this attack. Right. <clears throat> uh, very, very valid points. This is also a time, Ambassador, that we're seeing Benjamin Netanyahu lose popularity. There are protests against him. There are demands for him to step down for elections to take place, and there is increasing pressure to seek uh, the release of all the hostages. Uh, Berzin, do you feel that this could be a desperate Netanyahu uh, government which is wanting the war to prolong? Not particularly, no. Uh, Netanyahu is discredited. Uh, I think we're all on the same page of that, universally speaking, starting with the Israelis who are fed up with him and would be more than happy to see his back. Uh, th there's no denying that. But uh, it's not a question of prolonging the war or distracting from the main goal because uh, Iran is involved in sponsoring and subventing Hamas, even if not directly implicated according to intelligence reports that we now have for the 7th October massacre. It bankrolls Hamas and a host of other proxies who are out to obliterate Israel. But the point is, coming back to uh, the question of um, uh, taking out these eight individuals at the consulate, uh, Reza Zahidi, who was taken out, uh, was in between 2008 and 2016 head of Al-Quds operations in Lebanon and Iraq. He was a honcho and he had been a troublemaker for all this time and not just for Israel but for the Americans and other multi coalition forces across the Middle East. Uh, his uh, assistant, Haji Rahimi, was somewhat smaller fry, but Parikshit, both were smaller fry compared to Qasem Soleimani, who was taken out in January 2020. And the point is, even then, of course, we saw on social media a meltdown with hashtags of World War III and the like, and nothing came of it. So it's pretty much business as usual in the Middle East, insofar as I'm concerned. Mm. So you're saying it's pretty much business as usual in the Middle East. Now, coming back to the role of the United States, Considering that uh, Iran and also Iraq, uh, Ambassador Srivastav, have said that U.S. is also accountable and answerable for what has happened because it supports Israel in this conflict since the 7th of October. What could be the consequences for the U.S.? And in an election year, how would President Biden try to avoid getting into a larger conflict in the Middle East or avoid a larger war in the Middle East? 
frankly, I have not seen any report where Iranian government has held U.S. responsible for this strike. Uh, I think so far it is commendable that both sides sides have exercised restraint. Uh, after 7th October, U.S. clarified that is right that Iran was not involved in in carrying out the attack or or encouraging that it had no knowledge of it or and similarly uh, iran has uh, at every point made it clear that uh, it was not encouraging its uh, organizations like hezbollah hezbollah issued a statement that the fight in gaza was a palestinian fight so so far the major players have exercised restraint and as i mentioned earlier also what has prevented the spread of this conflict to the gulf which would get through which 20 percent of the international oil supply flows is an understanding between iran and saudi arabia which is holding mm -hmm. so so far the major players have kept have exercised restraint and as you mentioned right at the beginning U.S. has denied that it had any involvement or knowledge of this uh, attack. So let's hope that this conflict does not directly involve the majors. Right. Uh, you're absolutely right, Ambassador Shavastav, and the timing is crucial. Uh, this could be bad for oil prices if this war spreads. And more Gulf countries uh, get involved in this. Ambassador Shivasta, Berzin Wagmar, thank you very much for joining us on the program. We're taking a short break here on New Center, but coming up, over 100 Vistara flights cancelled in the last 48 hours after several pilots call in sick at the 11th hour. A special discussion when we return.